So in module number five, we're going to talk about some st software standards in general, and then uh, talk a little bit more specific about some DO178C. Of course, in the remaining modules of this uh, course, we're going to talk a little bit more detail about DO178C. So in this particular module, we'll talk a little bit about the layout of DO178C and what it's meant to do. Okay, so. In this, if you look at organizations that write standards, there's a large variety of organizations. I just put a couple in this slide just to give you an indication of some of the, the organizations that are involved in writing standards for aviation software or aviation hardware. Um, you know, so if you would have like a guide of, of all these standards with a short little description of what they are, it would fill books and books. With, with, uh, so you have a ton of those. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to break them down in two different types of standards. On one end we're going to have the development standards that kind of provide you some guidance uh, so to ensure that you follow an orderly and repeatable development process. By development processes I talk about okay to develop a software product or develop a hardware product. On the other side, you have assurance standards. These standards really provide a means to establish that certain attributes are present in a development. So if you want to really think about the difference between assurance and development standards is that the assurance tell you what it is that you need to do, what kind of activities that you need to do. And development standards tells you, give you more guidance on how you need to do this. And for example, a standard like DO178C is really an assurance standard since it doesn't really describe you how to do things exactly. It tells you what it is that you really need to be doing. So basically, if you look at the software portion of a system, you're going to first establish the criticality of this particular software component during your functional hazard assessment and preliminary system safety assessment. Then based on this criticality level, you're going to use a standard like DO178B or C, and I'll talk about that standard in more detail. You're going to find out what it is that you need to do uh, to get a product um, kind of that is compliant with this criticality level. It doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes, but it actually tries to use a structured process to make sure that you reduce the amount of faults that you're going to introduce in your code to hopefully a level that is acceptable. So you identify an assurance process. You, know, you identify a standard that describes an assurance process and it tells you what to do. Then you're going to identify a development process, you know, look at standards that Describe development process it tells you how to do th certain things specifically. Now, so standards, of course, are does it, you know, st you, the fact that you use a standard doesn't mean that your product is going to be safe. Yeah, the standards typically just describe a set of rules, a set of guidelines, and when you adhere to these guidelines you're less likely to more likely to have a safer product it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be completely fault free yeah? so standards do not solve problems but they help in giving you a streamlined process to deal with problems or reduce the, the uh, introduction of problems so a couple standards out there and I kind of focused in this particular slide Includes some a NASA software standards, some software standards from the European Union. I'm not going to talk too much about this, um, but uh, to give you an idea, the NASA Software Safety Guidance Book. I, I recommend you to take a quick peek at it. I put it on Blackboard so you can actually look at it and check out what's in it. Um, now, what we're going to talk a little bit more in, about is um, the 61508 standard. And this standard addresses kind of the functional safety of programmable, um, oh, sorry, electrical, electronic, and programmable electronic devices. Yeah. And in, in basically, it gives you a little bit of a general set of requirements. It talks a little bit about okay, how you're going to go about writing requirements for hardware, and how you're going to go about 
defining requirements for software. Okay. Now, what it also is going to do is going to establish what we call safety integrity levels or SILs, and we'll talk about it later, but those have to do with um, and the risk that we talked about earlier, with the likelihood that a particular failure does occur and the, the corresponding consequences. Now the nice thing what it does too, and that's kind of more like a development process, it, it gives you a little bit about what techniques and measures you could potentially use to help you during the various phases of your life cycle. So let's take a look at this um, document in a little bit more in uh, detail. Here you see kind of laid out okay, what this document looks like. It has multiple parts. You know, part one really describes the, 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 the general things you need to do, the general attributes that you need to make sure that are present in your, in your process, in your life cycle processes. But then this part two and part three kind of focus on hardware and it talks about software. And what's interesting to see is that if you use D178C, which is uh, the de facto standard really uh, for aviation, then that's really kind of I mean, it's being regarded as a tailored method for complying with 61508 Part 3. Now, if you look at the hardware life cycle within 61508, you can clearly see the standard V life cycle. You know, you have a hierarchical development process going all the way from an ASIC, which is kind of a, a chip. You know, you're breaking it down into a behavioral model of the ASIC, but like submodules of the ASIC. You're going to synthesize, place, and route. You get the final code, and then you're going to perform the verification and finally the validation of the product. Okay? So, similarly with software, you're going to say, I'm having a my system, which is an electronic system here, and I'm going to come up with a set of safety requirements. 